We're gonna be talking about grinding without overheating edges. If you're set up like us, you probably don't have or didn't have variable speed grinders for a while. We didn't have variable speed until fairly recently, so we've been using the single speed for like years. A lot of people on Instagram ask when they see me grinding on videos and stuff, aren't you overheating the blade and whatnot when you're just grinding at full speed like that? And no. Um, there's a few things that we do that help us prevent overheating of the blades when we're actually going through with a lot of the rough grinding and stuff like that. Number one is belt selection. So we're using fairly coarse belts and we're using fresh ones. So the, the most important thing is using a fresh belt. If you start using worn belts, like belts that don't have a lot of grit on them, they grind slower and they grind a lot hotter just because there's more surface area in contact. It's just kind of burnishing the steel. It's just heating it up like crazy. The second most important thing is pressure and speed. So when I'm using like a, a push stick and I'm grinding like this, I will apply very light pressure to the edge. And when I pull across the grinder, I'm going at a fairly decent speed. I'm not just sitting there and letting heat build up. So. At the edge, there's not a lot of material, so you have to be quick about it. I, I just apply very light pressure and I go, you know, pretty quick. On the spine, I can apply a lot more pressure and I can hold it there just because there's more mass. It acts like a heat sink. I can hog out material towards the spine like all day long. It doesn't really matter. But when I'm going to the, to the edge when there's no material and no steel for the heat to go to, like it, it's just going to build up heat at the edge, you go lighter and faster especially towards the tip. On this, with the Nakiri, you have a little bit more material because it's just, it's just blunted. But on very pointy tips, there's, there's almost no heat sink there. So same idea, but now you're going even faster and lighter. You're doing fast to light passes to reduce the amount of heat that you're building up on the tip. And then the last tip is dipping often. So I don't have like a water spray or, or anything like that. Every single pass, I'll dip it. So I just dip between all the passes. Between those three things, it's not too difficult to grind without overheating your edges. But when I was first grinding and first learning, I was using some, some grinders that were going super fast and I didn't know anything. So I just got some worn 220 grit ceramic, not ceramic belts, but like whatever. And I just, I just ground into it. And then all of a sudden I noticed the edge would be blue and I completely fucked it up. I'm gonna do an example. I'm gonna grind this edge full speed and just kind of go ham fist into it and you can see how fast it heats up. Like this is what you don't wanna do. Here you can see I'm not really using that much pressure but using a dull belt and going full speed makes the edge heat up really fast. This is what we don't wanna do. Now I'm using my other grinder, which isn't slow, but it's not going blazing fast. I have a fresh belt on there now and I've decreased my pressure just a tiny bit. When I get to the tip, I move quickly. Now feeling the blade and the edge, it's warm, but it's not really hot at all. That's what I'm looking for. So another question is, why do we do this? Why do we go so far on the grinder instead of just playing it safe and removing more material after? Number one is it gives us a good starting point to start refining and tuning the geometry way, way earlier. Um, it's just more efficient. The more that you can grind off efficiently on the grinder, the more time you save on the disc grinder or hand sanding. A good 10 minutes on the grinder will save you an hour hand sanding. It honestly saves us like hours, even with a disc grinder, because if you just leave a blunt edge and you, you leave a lot of material there, it's safer. You, you won't overheat it, but you'll spend a lot of sandpaper and a lot of time, even on a disc grinder, to thin it out and, and refine your geometry. And if you don't have a disc grinder, you're doing that on the stone or by hand, which I don't know how long it's gonna take. Yeah, when I was first starting out and I had just the very fast grinder, no disc grinder, I had to hand sand and it was like hours, actually days of hand sanding. So that's why we do this. When you get good at this, you save a lot of time. I think if you're good at this, every other grinding part is pretty easy. Like each piece of equipment has a goal. 
The grinder is about removing material. The disc is about refining geometry and the hand sanding is for creating a good finish. Yeah, exactly. More work you do removing material on the grinder, it saves you from having to re remove material on the disc, which wastes money and time. Yep. Actually, yeah, it does waste money because sandpaper is expensive, actually. Yeah. You don't want to spend so much time and materials on the disc grinder. Right. Whereas the belt will last oh, yeah. for these, much longer. These last so long. Yeah. So yeah, in conclusion, it's all about using a fresh coarse belt. So we, we go from 36 to 80 grit. I don't go any higher than that on the belt grinder. It's being cognizant of where you're applying pressure, how much pressure, and how fast your feet is across the grinder when you're, when you're pulling the blade across. Right. And, and then dipping often. And then dipping often, yeah. Because you can, you can do all those, but if you forget to dip, you're just accumulating yeah. more heat and then eventually you're gonna overheat it. Right. And just to reiterate, if you aren't working on an Akiri and you have a really fine tip, mm -hmm. really short passes dip after each one. Yeah, like and it's literally just like boop, dip, bloop, dip. Right, and you don't need it much pressure at all. The, the push stick is there just to kind of dictate where the pressure is, not necessarily apply any substantial pressure. Yeah. I thin out blades in two different ways. It depends on what I'm feeling. But sometimes I'll thin it out with a push stick. I'll just kind of like apply pressure, kind of float at that angle. So I'm, you could just leave it like that and it's just gonna float on a grinder. It won't grind anything, but it'll lock it into that angle. And then I apply a little bit of torque to the tank, just twisting it a little tiny bit. So I'm floating the angle, locking it on there, and I just twist it a little bit. And that gives me just enough pressure at the edge to thin it out there because I don't like applying direct pressure to the edge. It's too easy for me to over grind it. And I've done that. I've fucked up so many blades trying to do that. So Don just explained to you his technique for thinning the edge, which I think if you're an advanced grinder already, you probably can try out and fail a couple of times at burning blades. But I'm gonna show you how I do <laughs> it if you're a beginner and you don't wanna burn a bunch of fucking blades trying to learn how to apply the right amount of torque. Yeah, it's not that bad. Okay, well, let me, let me show you. So we have this Teflon push stick that has a really aggressive angle on it that has a very defined kind of pointed bit. Yep. And you do that just by grinding it down to that shape that you want. And the specific push stick is that how I deliver the pressure for thinning out an edge. Generally, if you're a, a newbie, you do want to save a lot of thinning for the disc just because it'll save you from ruining a blade because doing this is quite like all or nothing and can ruin your entire piece of steel. Yeah. But my technique is to take the very corner of the push stick and say I'm just floating this on the grinder and I have my hand here ready to kind of push and pull for the pass. Take that pointed tip and apply it exactly where I want the pressure. Which is right at, basically right at the tip. Right, and I can't stress enough how little pressure I'm applying. It's so infinitesimal, the amount of pr pressure that I'm applying. I'm basically just holding it there. Is it just enough pressure to basically float it on the grinder? Yeah, and you're not tossing a huge amount of sparks, but it's the same technique that we were talking about where you're making a really fast pass. But instead of having to coordinate your torque and push at the same time, or at least hold it in place at the same time, you're just putting that, that fine edge exactly where you want the material to be taken off, which is very close to the tip of the... And trust me, this is a lot easier than trying to learn how to torque. So very light pressure, the point exactly where you want material to be taken off. And again, very light pressure and quick passes, kind of like that. And that'll get you closer. Maybe not as far as Don gets when he's torquing it, but if you're a beginner or, or someone that's like not as confident, you can save some hogging of material for the disc or for hand sanding just to mitigate the amount of failures. And then once you get the mes muscle memory, you can start messing with trying to coordinate torque at the same time. And the only reason I, I emphasize this is because I've burned blades trying to torque. So if you don't apply the right amount or apply too much, 
or have a little bit of like lateral motion on the platen, you're just applying a shit ton of heat to a very specific area mm. and you can run into burning issues that way. And gouging it and over grinding. And, and over grinding and just messing up. What I was talking about with the twisting thing, nowadays I generally freehand the last part when I get a lot thinner towards the edge. Um, I will turn it diagonally. So instead of holding it perpendicular, I turn the blade diagonally because it increases the footprint for me. So that gives me more stability because right now it's kind of weak. Like I can easily put too much pressure on the edges. If I turn it, it's a lot stronger of a footprint. It takes a lot more force to kind of go over the edge. And so when I'm holding like this, I kind of just hold it like this, float it on the grinder. It takes a little bit more practice to do that freehand than the push stick. And I apply the same torque motion right there. And it's not much. It's like if you were tightening a bolt with your fingers. Like you can't go super, super tight. But that's what I do nowadays on the grinder. And for me, that makes it easy. It's kind of a muscle memory thing, but I mess up personally less doing it this way than with the direct push thing. So there's a good way to test how thick your edge is still because once you've thinned it a lot on the grinder it's hard to tell. Yes. So what you can do is sharpen the um, edge of the knife on the disc mm -hmm. or on a stone, on stone. Yeah. Uh, or diamond plate or something like that until you get a burr on either side and oftentimes you'll see how much more thinning you have to do because it'll show on either side yeah. how thick um, the steel still is. Yeah, so basically when you get it thin enough on the grinder, you're gonna feel that it's probably very thin, but then once you sharpen it, it's actually not. Right. And that's the point when you can sharpen it and actually kick up a burr, and then now you can see how thick your edge really is and start chasing it to basically a zero edge. Right. And we have a, we've already done a video on that, so that's, where's the YouTube corner? That. Yeah, that way. Yeah. Here, point again. Right there. Yeah, it's right. It's right there. Right there. Yeah. <laughs> but that's about it. So before the end of this video, I just want to mention that I've officially started my Patreon. I don't like ads. I don't like seeing them, and I don't want them in my videos. We're gonna keep making videos, but it's a lot of work between me and Sam. And now we're getting my friend Jackie to help edit. This is something that I really enjoy doing and I want to keep showing the process and doing tutorials and stuff like that. For the Patreon, we're starting a Discord for people to chat in and I'll be doing extra videos like monthly Q&As, uncut videos, and just miscellaneous things like that. If you like our stuff and you want to help out a little bit, we would be eternally grateful. But you definitely don't have to make any commitments or be pressured to make any financial contributions. Um, just only if you want to. So, thank you. And why do I have to smell it? Why do you stink like farts? I can't help it. It's a bird. Shut the fuck up, bird! Shut up, you dumb bird! Ten seconds of silence. <laughs> Go fuck yourselves. No!